Hello, welcome to World History Day 5. We are going to continue investigating the codes of Hammurabi and seeing what decisions we would make and then comparing those to Hammurabi's written decisions in ancient history. So in your notebook, please write down the case number. So this will be three dash the code number, which is 185 for each one. You don't need to write down the conundrum, the historical conundrum that we're facing. Please pray with me as we begin day five. Dear Jesus, thank you that true justice comes from you and that we need only to ask you for mercy, not rely on the unfair and inconsistent um, mercy of people, but only you, Lord Jesus. Amen. All right. So as we prayed about, we are going to find that while written down, Hammurabi's code was rather harsh in some ways, and certainly much more harsh for those of lower social status, according to Mesopotamian Babylon 1 society. The question for 3185 is what should be done if a son is adopted and then the birth parents want him back? Uh, go ahead and pause the lecture for a moment while you write down your thoughts. And again, you don't need to copy down the question. You could just write adoption. Here is Hammurabi's decision. If a man takes in his own home a young boy as a son and rears him, one may not bring claim for that adopted son. What he's saying there is that once a child has been raised in another home as adopted by that other family, the birth parents cannot just demand that person back. And we have similar protections for adoptive families today through social services. Hammurabi seemed ahead of his time in this particular law because this is similar to what a lot of states have decided today. Once an adoption is finalized, those adoptive parents are the parents. All right, next question, case 4-110 in your notes and date today's notes. What should be done when a sister of God, that's a way of saying a nun, in, at least in the Mesopotamian society, enters a wine shop for to drink? Well, and you probably need some inside information here, which is that the sisters of God in the Babylon 1 culture were not supposed to drink wine. So what should happen if they break their vow about that and go into that wine shop. Pause the lecture for a moment, write down your thoughts, and then let's see what Hammurabi's are. If a sister of God, none, who is not living in a convent opens a wine shop or enters a wine shop for a drink, they shall burn that woman. Very harsh, very harsh penalty for that. So I guess they were really trying to keep their religious agreements that they'd made sacred in their mind. Pretty harsh though. Pro ho hopefully harsher than the penalty that you had suggested thinking about. Um, so the next one to write down is case five dash code 108. What happens to a wine seller who fails to arrest bad characters gathered at her shop? And you can pause the lecture, write down your own thoughts. As we're thinking about this one, this is also a little bit forward thinking in Hammurabi's part, it resembles somewhat if you're going through the testing to get an alcohol seller's license today, which you do to a certain extent if you're getting a job to be a cashier at HEB, by the way. But uh, the idea of these kinds of laws where those who sell alcohol, whether in a drinking establishment or grocery store, or wherever it may be, that they are responsible for the conduct of those who buy the alcohol. So, because that, that selling that to them could make their conduct even worse. Um, today, you know, we think about reckless driving and all those kinds of things. In those days, apparently there were ways to be dangerous under the influence as well. So the characters are bad in the shop. Maybe they're already inebriated. Uh, maybe they're just known for a bad reputation. What, and they sell them wine anyway. What happens? Result. If bad characters gather in the house of a wine cellar and she does not arrest those characters and bring them to the palace, that wine cellar shall be put to death. 